Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is my friend's E46, and the problem it's having is that it hasn't been able to set the catalytic converter engine monitor. Now, if you don't know what the engine monitors are, basically, uh, I'm sure you all know what DTCs are, or you know, codes like P0420, those kinds of codes that you check with a code reader. Well, some of you might have code readers that can see the engine monitors, and some of you might not. But basically, the engine monitors are it's when the engine computer is constantly checking various parameters to determine whether or not your car is ready for emissions testing. There are a couple of uh, engine monitors that are run right after you reset your codes, and there are some that are continuously running or are always rechecking themselves. So one of the ones that is constantly rerunning and checking itself is the catalytic converter monitor. It's actually the one that takes the longest to actually complete sometimes. Now, there are no codes coming up, there are no DTCs, and there's no check engine light. So uh, this can be a little confusing for a lot of people. Usually the cause of a, a catalytic converter monitor that won't set is, is actually not the catalytic converters themselves, it's actually in uh, the fuel trims. Usually when, you know, if there's something wrong with the fuel trims, if there's a little bit of a vacuum leak or something like that, it'll actually cause the catalytic converter not to set because you you know the catalytic converter monitors depend on the engine computer being perfectly balanced. They depend on you know no extra oxygen getting in, screwing things up. So that if you see that your catalytic converter monitors aren't setting, you need to look at your fuel trims. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do in this vehicle. So let's get started. All right, I've got my uh, ScanMaster ELM software running. And as you can see, the catalytic, the catalyst monitor is not complete. All the other monitors are complete. Now, let me check for trouble codes. No codes, like I said. So let me go over to uh, live data. Yeah, so I can already see a problem. We got short-term bank one here, long-term bank one, short-term bank two, long-term bank two. And as you can see, we're negative at idle. So, that is definitely a problem. It should be zero. So if it's negative at idle, let me let me see what happens when we uh, speed up the engine. All right, so fuel trims went up. So this is definitely definitely a problem. Now with negative fuel trims. Um, there are two causes. Number one, either there's a bad mass airflow sensor, because a bad mass, this is actually characteristic of a bad mass airflow sensor, it'll be negative at idle, but at speed it'll actually, the fuel trim will actually go up. So right away this does look like a bad mass airflow sensor, um, but I don't suspect that it is because um, we've already changed the mass airflow sensor in this car before. And uh, so right there, I don't, I don't actually suspect that. Number two, the second problem that it could be is there could be a problem with the fuel system. There could be a leaky fuel injector or a problem with the fuel pressure regulator or something like that. Um, if it was a leaky injector, we would only see a problem on one fuel, on one bank instead of both of them. Here we have the same problem on both banks. So it's unlikely that we've got a leaky fuel injector um, on one bank and on another. So right there I'm dismissing that possibility. So therefore I'm suspecting a problem with the, with the overall fuel system. So the next step here is to check the fuel pressure. So I'll get the fuel pressure gauge hooked up. This bolt's already loose here. Really easy to check the fuel pressure on these cars. I'll give you a little trailer valve which is just great. There's gonna be a little bit of pressure, a little fuel will squirt out. Not the end of the world. So if you can get a fuel pressure gauge like this with a relief valve, it's always the best kind. But hey, as long as it works. I found that the Harbor Freight gauges are a little unreliable. They're not exactly, uh, not exactly accurate, but if you only have that, it will do the job. 
All right, so already I see the problem right here. The fuel pressure regulator should be regulating the pressure at exactly 3.5 bar, which is just slightly less than 50 PSI, it's like 49.6. So the fact that it's more than 50 indicates a problem. Okay, so to uh, get the fuel pressure regulator out, I'm gonna pull this off, pull off the vacuum line here. Pry out this little clip that holds it. And we're gonna give it a little bit of a twist. I don't know if I can get this around it. And these are helpful because I can just sort of pry with them. Okay. There we go. So I've got my replacement regulator. I'm just gonna get that back in right now. No need to let all the fuel drain out. I'm gonna twist it up in there. I want to make sure I get it up all the way, get it completely seated. There, see it actually needed to go up just slightly more. You want to make sure that it's just up absolutely all the way. The top of it has to be flush with this, with this top part right here. So get the holding clip back in. All right, let's give another test. Okay, test number two. Let it prime for a second or two. Okay, fuel pressure is a little bit lower, so there's obviously a difference between those two regulators. Keep in mind, this is also a used regulator. Okay, so back to our data. As I recall yesterday, when we would uh, run the car at speed, it act, the fuel trim would actually increase by about 10%. So let's see if we still get that same behavior. So that was about 3,000 RPM. Looks like it was good. I think the scale might be a little off here. But yeah, I mean, uh, we had a little bit of erratic, erratic behavior here. And I would actually say it's worse on this bank, which, you know, might now lead me to look at the, the uh, fuel injectors and wonder if they're completely clean. However, this is definitely better than it was uh, yesterday. We're definitely not seeing that increase of 10% in the fuel trim. I would definitely at this point think it's time to take this thing for a test drive and see uh, whether or not this problem is fixed. I, I, I can't call it absolutely fixed just be based on this little behavior I'm seeing here, these little high and low peaks. These do worry me, it's not exactly normal, but this might be normal enough to, to set the catalytic converter. So, uh, I think that's our next step. Okay guys, so I did do a couple of test drives uh, over, a, over a couple of days and the monitor did not set. And as I thought more and more about that pattern we were seeing about the ups and downs of the, um, the fuel trim, along with the fact that there's still increased fuel pressure. And per, in particular, the the fact that bank two seemed to be a little bit worse than bank one i started to realize that maybe we might have an issue with a leaking fuel injector so as you can see i've pulled the injectors um, out of the intake manifold i've and then i've reclipped them back into the, the fuel rail and i've got the fuel rail propped up you can see the the back peg is just it's sort of sitting on one of these right here that way all of the fuel injectors are suspended in the air it's not resting on the bottom of either one of these that way you know the tips don't get damaged in any way and what i want to do is go ahead and prime the fuel pump and then let it sit and see if we get any leaking from the fuel injectors. So the fuel pump primes whenever you turn the ignition on for a couple seconds. You hear it? Ah, that was interesting. All right, that was funny. So that uh, shows you right there how important it is to make sure the clip is secured properly. 
turn the clip from side to side, make sure that it turns easily and that this top uh, groove is on this slot. And also tug on the fuel injector itself and make sure it doesn't pull out. What actually happened was the clip stayed attached to the fuel injector. I'm just demonstrating on the front one, but this was on the back, obviously. Um, the clip and the fuel injector came out together. So the clip, it wasn't actually fully clipped on both sides of these, uh, of the little ridge right here on the fuel, on the fuel rail, the little metal, the little shiny metal ridge. So make sure you tug on all of them. I had, I remember tugging on all of them, but that back one's a little hard to get to. So that's what happened. So take two, prime it. I'm just going to turn the key off so that that the noise of the, uh, idle air control valve stops eventually. <clears throat> Let's get this position such that we can see it. You can see that fuel pressure is settled down to, uh, it should be, you know, when you turn this on, it should be 50 PSI. Of course, I didn't see what happened here. Uh, I didn't see what it was at. I'm assuming it's still at 55 or so. Normally, it'll, the fuel pressure will be 50 when the fuel pump is on, and then it'll drop 5 PSI when the fuel pump turns off. And it should stay there. And there are two things, there are two reasons that it should stay there. Number one, the fuel injectors should not be leaking. And number two, there is an, a, a check valve inside of the fuel pump, which prevents the fuel from returning back into the tank. It's supposed to keep pressure in the line. That way you don't have problems starting each time. That way the car will start right back up. And it's been my experience that even with like a brand new fuel pump, um, even after a couple of days, the pressure does bleed off pretty slowly, but eventually it should settle, settle somewhere, somewhere within the 30 to 40 PSI range. But you know, it shouldn't bleed all the way down to zero very rapidly. And you know, if it, if it does that, then you've got a problem with your check valve and that will be causing you hard starts. And if you want to fix that, you don't have to fix that. It just, you know, it's just gonna give you starting problems. But if you wanna fix that, you have to change the fuel pump to fix that uh, return valve, unless it's a leaking injector. As we see here though, these injectors are not leaking. If they were leaking, I'd be seeing drops of fuel coming out. And I'm not seeing that. So this was a good test to do. I'm satisfied with this test. I'm satisfied that the fuel pump check valve is, is working pretty well. You can see that it's slowly bleeding off. And again, that's normal. I'll let it sit for about 10 minutes, but I'm pretty sure that uh, our problem does not lie here in the fuel injectors. So I'm not sure if I pointed this out in a previous uh, scene or not, but if you notice right here, this oxygen sensor, this is uh, bank two, ox uh, the oxygen sensor one, the one before the cat, this one's actually lazy. And what happened is I right now I just switched them. So this one was here and this one was here. I just physically switched the two pre-cat oxygen sensors to see if this lazy oxygen sensor would follow, um, would follow that to uh, bank two. And it looks like it has, which is confirming that that oxygen sensor is a little lazy. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm definitely gonna replace that. I'm gonna recommend to the owner that we probably replace both of them um, and then revisit this problem. But okay, more time has passed. Another couple days have passed and uh, my friend did get me new oxygen sensors. It took him a couple days to bring me some new oxygen sensors. I've put these in already, but interesting story. Um, since it did take him a couple days, um, the day after I first told him we needed new sensors, I came out here and just kind of was playing around. I was looking at fuel trims again, just looking at things. And the bank one sensor totally just died. And that was the one that was supposedly not lazy. Remember we had the lazy, uh, sensor on bank two. That was the one that I really needed to replace. We were just going to replace number one, because when you replace oxygen sensors, you do them in pairs, you know, D just doesn't make any sense to do one and not the other. But the other sensor died. The, the supposedly one that was still good bank one just totally died. Couldn't get it to work. Unplugged it, plugged it in several times. I moved them around. It was dead. So funny timing. I mean, 
he definitely, definitely needed new oxygen sensors and not a minute too soon. So when I first uh, turned the car on and was looking at things, got it all warmed up, Really strangely, we had like zero-ish fuel trims on bank two and minus 10% fuel trim on bank one. And I was just like, I, I was like pulling my hair out, even though I don't have any. Uh, I was pulling my hair out trying to figure out what the hell was causing that. I'm like, okay, great. We have like a one bank only condition going on. You Did I mess up a fuel injector when I pulled it out and inspected it? What happened there? So... Couldn't really figure anything out. I went and I took the car for a test drive, parked it in here. My computer started acting up. So I shut things down for a day. It is now a new day. I turned on the car, warmed it up, was checking out fuel trims, and both of them are now negative. They're minus 10-ish right now. You can see it's um, where I ended this log. Right now when I was just testing things, it was minus 9.4 and this one was minus 6.3, but trust me, they're basically roughly the same. This would just, this got just slightly more positive um, a second before I turned it off. However, they're both negative, okay? Okay guys, here's the deal. Um, yesterday I went to the junkyard and I got two more fuel pressure regulators and I've tried them and each one is saying the same 54 PSI. So based on this evidence, I mean, at this point I've tried like five total fuel pressure regulators and yes they're all used but it's it's statistically unlikely that all five are going to be bad it's way more likely at this point that 54 psi is the standard normal operating pressure for this engine that combined with the fact that i've been involved on a thread on e46 fanatics over the last few days where somebody else is having the same sort of question about uh this engine and the fuel pressure that it's running at and whether that's correct or not he's also getting around 54 psi and he went and tested a known good car um, engine as well same 54 psi so based on all of this evidence i'm just going to go ahead and say 54 psi is normal on an m52 TU engine, the technical update, which is in the earlier E46s. Now, after I did that, I hooked up the computer and turned the engine on, warmed it up, and I noticed that the fuel pressures are now normal. They've corrected themselves. It's no longer minus 10% uh, fuel trim at idle. Uh, I don't I don't know why I can't really explain it. Um, the only really theory I have maybe is that they just needed to be broken in a little bit more or something. I don't know. I, I I'm not going to dwell on that question too much because they're working now and you know, I'm, I'm just kind of, I, I'm accepting that. So what I did was I went for a test drive and I logged that whole drive in, in uh, scan master ELM. So I want to show you the results of that drive. All right, guys. As you can see, fuel trims are basically normal here. And uh, so, you know, that is all good. Now, one thing that I noticed during the test drive is once the, uh, once the oxygen sensors kind of warmed up here, here I'm kind of just scrolling through the whole drive, right? Now, the interesting thing is this right here. Now, the rear, these are the uh, bank, these are sensor two. This is the, this is bank one, bank two, sensor two. This is the, these are the rear oxygen sensors. These are the, the uh, pre-cat oxygen sensors, the ones that we changed, right? These are the rear ones, which I haven't touched. Now on bank two, what, what you're supposed to notice, first of all, with rear oxygen sensors is they're supposed to be, you know, they're, they're supposed to be roughly fixed in the rich range while you're running, while they're warmed up. Should be around six to 700 uh, millivolts. And, you know, they should basically stay that way, at least when your speed is steady. If you're varying engine speeds, then you're going to see, you know, some lean periods and some, and then cycling back to rich. But they, these should never match what your bank one sensors are doing. Now, if you'll notice, the uh, bank two, sensor two, is definitely, you know, going rich. I think this is a period when I'm, you know, just kind of going at a sustained speed, but bank one is fixed lean. And that right there is definitely a problem. There are some periods where it goes rich and then it goes lean. And there are other times when this one is going rich and, or is going lean when it should be rich. But here, here's probably where I got in the freeway. You can see it's a sustained period right here. This one's rich and this one's lean. 
and that is definitely definitely a problem okay guys so i talked to the owner of this car and he told me that he had to replace one of the oxygen sensors in the past i um, mean he went after market he went cheap so uh the reason he had to do that is because whoever did the clutch job actually pinned one of the oxygen sensor wires between the transmission bell housing and the engine and um, i can actually see it up there so he had to basically cut it and he, i guess he had to leave it there and um, I can see that the wire colors are basically white and black and gray. And the wire colors on this oxygen sensor are also white and black and gray. And I know that those are the standard colors for the Bosch sensors. So I'm gonna say that this is the aftermarket one because it has black and white and blue wires. So this is the aftermarket sensor right here. It also just looks newer. This one just looks way old and crustier and stuff. So um, this sensor right here is actually in bank one. I can follow this pipe up and I can see that it goes to the front of the car. Two cylinders one through three, that's bank one. Uh, cylinders four through six are bank two. So the bank two sensor is back here. This is the bank one sensor. So the bank one sensor is the aftermarket sensor. Um, now we do know that the bank one is the the ones the uh the one that's actually having those problems so it could be that this aftermarket sensor is you know just not good okay check this out guys you can see that our aftermarket bank one sensor is actually right back here right now normally the way this is supposed to be set up is that your bank one wire is supposed to be here and your bank two wire is supposed to be here, which kind of corresponds to the bank one pre-cat sensor here and the bank two pre-cat sensor over here. But it looks like, it looks like the bank one oxygen sensor, which we know is this aftermarket sensor. You see it has the blue wire right here. It looks like that is in the bank two spot. And that it may be, now I'm now realizing this, it may be that that bank one sensor is plugged into the bank two sensor plug it might be that these oxygen sensors are switched so yeah what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna actually you know what here i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna warm up the car first okay i'm gonna get the oxygen sensors responding and then i'm gonna unplug it while the car is running and we're gonna look at the scan tool and we're gonna see which bank goes dead just to confirm this because it could be that we have our diagnosis here Okay guys, I've got the, uh, the rear O2s warmed up at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna unplug the aftermarket sensor that's screwed into bank one. Oh, and look at that, bank two went dead. So this is totally, totally our problem, guys. The rear oxygen sensors are switched. That is definitely what's wrong with this car. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch them back to what they're supposed to be and uh, then I'm going to go ahead and go for a test drive here this is bank two plugged in correctly and this is bank one plugged in correctly all right I'm going to put these wires back actually these are I need to put put this wire under this one yeah okay here we go. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put the uh, bank one sensor where it's supposed to be. Hopefully this bank one sensor, even though it's aftermarket, hopefully it still works. And uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is probably erase all the adaptations. And I think I might even just let this car cool off so that I can just do a drive cycle um, and make sure that I can get the uh, catalytic monitor to set. Okay, I did just get back from that test drive and these are the results. As you can see right here, here's about where I got on the freeway. Now you can see both bank one and bank two are fixed rich when you're at a steady speed like they're supposed to be. And you know, there are little variations here and there when you change speed. I remember setting the cruise control on this drive so that I would just get, you know, as consistent results as I possibly could. Here's where I was getting off the freeway. So yeah, that, that is definitely looking normal now. And what's better is 
check it out catalyst monitor complete so that is a confirmed fix you see you can see that we still need to set the oxygen sensor monitor i probably need to go for another drive cycle but yeah that is totally totally a fix the problem with this car when it came here is that the catalyst monitor would not set after a year of, of driving like this this thing has been uh has had this problem for quite a long time and that was the solution. It was just rear oxygen sensors were switched. Unbelievable. I will admit that I did get somewhat distracted during this diagnosis, uh, particularly, I mean, we were seeing negative fuel trims and I did find high fuel pressure according to the information that BMW has put out there. It's supposed to be 3.5 bar of pressure in that pressure regulator. I mean, it, it even actually has it stamped on the pressure regulator, 3.5 bar. So uh, 3.5 bar is about 50 PSI. 54 PSI is like 3.7 bar. So I, I don't know. There's incorrect information out there about the fuel pressure regulators on this car. I now realize that it's 54 PSI and I'm confident in putting that out there. And uh, ultimately that led me to quite a bit of a distraction looking for problems where they didn't exist. Once I finally noticed that there was something wrong with the rear oxygen sensors, the first thing I thought to check for was whether they were switched because that's a very common problem, it happens more than you would think. So that turned out to be the solution and you know, I'm happy with that. So job well done. Hope you guys find this video helpful. Thanks a lot for watching.